When the student is asked for his homework, he laughs. Like I must be joking. This school is in East Palo Alto. But this substitute teacher has seen these walls before. In, in Oakland, Oakland Detroit, Detroit, anywhere else forgotten about by real estate booms. The student laughs because he sees desperation leaking, leaking out, out of the walls, walls built in the 70s, lit by dim blinking fluorescence. The student laughs because his eyes are open. This young boy is no fool. And he knows <laughs> that this desperation is a learned behavior. And his spine okay, cheers okay. with the shiver that causes the sun to rise that only he can see. His personal path of illumination rises from his ribcage like, like a hot air balloon, fueled by my words his teacher told him, your mind is a tool. Sharpen it on books like there were wet stones to cut cords so, so you can, can hover above desperate patterns and think for yourself. The student is awake. Won't sit down, shut up, or, or listen, listen blankly anymore. But we are seeding our youth with vines designed to choke out life. Cafeterias and prisons and schools train gut as mine to shut up and swallow the blades provided by Cisco systems. Blueprints for school buildings fall from the same architects that churn out prisons. Both structures clench around the necks of their inhabitants, strangling enthusiasm that would grow outside the bricks, stacked, lining student prisoners in cell or desk, accustomed to jumping at the sound of a bell. Off to the next detention center, it is time for a wake up call. But we are seeding our youth with vines designed to choke out life and are surprised that babies drop out of teenagers as teenagers drop out of high school. Surprised as students with numb noses and punctured veins to punctuate the I don't give a fuck attitude that drains into classrooms from governors' budget cuts, trimming a little future out of our lives. Education being cut down to the cold efficiency of a mechanized factory has been an American theme since the days of Francis Bellamy, winding up a sales pitch in the form of a flag salute, a wholesale condition of government school kids. I pledge allegiance. In 1888, Frances Bellamy worked both as a producer and salesman of American flags. She was obsessed with the cold efficiency of the military and went to school along with everything else to mirror this cold precision. His mission was to create an industrial army and he sought the flag salute as the beginning of a grind of blind obedience to the students. In 1888, there was one slight difference in the flag salute. Students' arms were raised to honor the Republic straight from the shoulder. Francis Bellamy me, the program pirate, infamous flag dealer, left his mark like the lynch letter, slaying the image of the red, white, and confused. Francis Bellamy owned the copyrights to the Pledge of Allegiance. He sold it to government schools to create armies of industrial, militant minded, pavlogs, lapdogs instead of what should be students. Classroom rows of desks and pop film formation preceding the matrix. Students are force fed, falsified information while they sit entranced. It is time for a wake up call. Instead of a pledge to empire, how about a pledge to what moves us? Freedom from books bound by chapters that only speak of Eurocentric beginnings. I'll pledge allegiance to the light of knowledge so that it may bounce off people like they were mirrors, transforming any classroom into this one. Okay, we're gonna bring up my sister right here. She gonna spit out. Kim's husband. She came out with this big no, pack that was so hot. No, this one. I know. Do I know. I know. I, I do it. Hey, show us some love. Show us some love.